So hello everyone and welcome to a webinar on the Collaborative Conservation and Adaptation Strategy Toolbox or CCAST. I am Matt Graybaugh. I am a science coordinator for the Southwest region of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I've been with Fish and Wildlife Service uh, Science Applications Program for just over two years. And today I'll be presenting to you all an update on the Collaborative Conservation Adaptation Strategy Toolbox or CCAST. Um, and with that we'll jump right in. So a quick presentation outline for you guys, uh, just because this is a slightly longer presentation. I will be providing a relatively quick background on the case study and the development of CCAST, um, really the background. Um, but even if you have attended some webinars where I presented that before, the real focus of this call or this webinar is to talk about the other things on here. So first, just a general progress update on where we, where we are with getting case studies up online for CCAST. We'll talk about some of the feedback we've gotten from case study contributors so far, as well as the science working group. We'll take some time to go through an orientation of the revised CCAST platform with the new functionality and other tools that have been put on there. Quickly talk about accomplishments and then discuss the future of CCAST and kind of where we are right now in the vision for the future. So as a brief history, um, just to make sure everybody's up to speed on where this came from, the initial momentum for this exercise was really through the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative, where partners collaborating across the Mojave, Sonoran, and Chihuahuan Desert ecoregions were working together to um, identify and address major natural resource challenges. And a lot of that group's input it drove the development of this project. And the, that group of partners identified the need for CCAST. So uh, conservation partners identified the need to improve communication about strategies to increase ecosystem resilience. There are different pieces to that. Um, primarily, or one of the big things is sharing stories about on the ground actions to learn more about what works and what doesn't, and really to provide a platform for people to share stories that aren't really out there otherwise. So. Um, management actions that somebody is working on that don't go into the peer-reviewed literature and journal article. Um, and the idea was to turn those into case studies, so that was our definition of a case study. One of the goals of the larger effort is to connect people working across large geographies, identify shared challenges and adaptation strategies to restore or conserve natural resources, but really, the goal of this is to focus on the needs of resource managers and provide them tools that they need both to communicate what they're doing as well as to learn from each other. And in order to do that, we need to pr provide the case studies in an accessible um, platform. And that was a management toolbox that has uh, evolved to become the CCAST platform. So briefly, um, the initiation of CCAST here, we really began developing the first case study um, in August of 2017, so just over a year ago. And in doing that, we worked with partners to define what a case study is, and I um, talked about that a bit in the previous slide. We also developed an initial case study template, uh, layout, and a development process that we worked with partners to revise over the last year. We also completed an initial prioritization of case studies, and initially especially that was identifying partners that wanted to share their stories, and those became our highest priority case studies. In doing this, we also reviewed other online platforms that are available to do to share similar work. Uh, there are some examples like CAKE or the Climate Adaptation Knowledge Exchange. Um, adaptation library, you know, various platforms. And we wanted to make sure that we weren't duplicating something that was out there and really provide a unique, um, a unique um, format and a unique tool in CCAST. So following development of that first case study, we worked on developing, again, the online platform of CCAST with the official launch in February of this year. And that was when we had our initial um, CCAST webinar. 
So sharing case studies, what is a case study? A little more detail on that. It's really an on-the-ground project shared through a standard, easy-to-read template. We really want to share stories of strategy success and especially failures. Um, but it's also broader than just on the ground, you know, something that's being completed on the ground. It can include monitoring frameworks, resource valuations, um, looking at ecosystem services and things like that, as long as those are things that address the needs of resource, resource managers, as um, we said previously. And then again, getting to some of the bigger picture goals, we want to improve communication across this region, share stories that might not be easily available elsewhere. And then, of course, those case studies are used to populate CCAST. So in the template and standard format for case studies, there are various components. Um, a lot of these are standard you know, project summary topics, so background, key issues, project goals, project highlights, and various things. But the two things we really want to focus in on are the lessons learned that, are, um, that should inform you know, management, other management activities, as well as providing an online location for project resources to make those things available. And we'll go into a little more detail on the different components as we go forward, so I'm not going to go into those too much more. Briefly, an overview of how we develop case studies. Um, we identified the most significant management challenges and prioritized strategies, and I'll have a slide or two on those. We identify example projects for case studies through our existing networks and uh, conduct outreach to the potential project leads for those case studies. The CCAS team, which I'll provide more info on later, are the ones really developing the draft content for the case studies. And we use material that's provided to us by the contributors and the, this team develops the draft content. Once the contributors approve of the draft content, we share with a, a review team for questions and comments, and um, that's through the science working group, the regional science working group. And then finally, once those questions and comments have been addressed, the edited content is used to populate a two-page handout as well as an online version of each case study. So before we go any farther, I wanted to uh, mention the you know, who the CCAS team is. So it's being co-led by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service through the Science Applications Program, which is me, um, and Genevieve Johnson through the Bureau of Reclamation. And then there are various other partners here that help us, you know, uh, guide the development of CCAS and as well as populating content for the case studies. So that's the Forest Service through Rocky Mountain Research Station, the Cross Watershed Network, University of New Mexico, University of Arizona, the former Desert LCC Science Working Group that is conducting the technical reviews, and of course, the case study contributors, which are the key piece to this, of course. And should also mention that a lot of the, well, some of the initial funding that went into development of this was through a grant with the USDA Southwest Climate Hub. We had done a lot of work up front in identifying the management challenges through the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative, uh, through various questionnaires and workshops. And essentially, we had suites of high priority management challenges for the different ecosystems in the desert southwest. And this is just one example for aquatic and riparian resources where the partners had prioritized those different um, challenges. So we're able to use that to get us started on what case studies we should prioritize. Once we looked at the challenges, we were able to um, work with others to identify the highest priority management strategies, and these could be mitigation or adaptation strategies, um, baseline monitoring versus and adaptive management programs, uh, large-scale collaboration and governance structures, et cetera. Um, and we had those prioritized lists through various in-person and virtual workshops, and we continue to develop those through some landscape conservation design projects. But really what it comes down to is figuring out what land managers are already doing, which strategies should be coordinated across geographies to maximize the impacts, and then what strategies are appropriate for now and probable future conditions. So trying to think ahead uh, to emerging challenges.
Really quickly, just a couple screenshots of what our templates look like for developing the case study content. So the case study authors and the CCAST team use the standard Google, Talk, Google Doc template, which is nothing fancy, um, to take contributed content and put it in a standard format. Uh, once this is compiled, it's sent to the science working group for technical review, and then the text that is in this Google Doc then goes on to the two-page handout and the online version of the case study. And with that, uh, we're going to take a break from a uh, boring PowerPoint presentation and take a look at the updates to, to CCAST. So give me a second as I navigate over there. All right, so this is um, the online portal for CCAST. And one reason we're providing an orientation again today is that we have made some changes based on feedback that we've gotten, primarily trying to make the website uh, more easy to navigate and also easier to find the, the content that folks are really looking for. So this major story map has a bunch of information in it, but we have reorganized it a little bit so that um, you can get to the case studies more quickly. So as you scroll through, there's a brief introduction here at the top, which is content that we've already talked about in the PowerPoint, and then links to the different, um, different ways that you can find case studies. There is a bunch of additional information down below, the what is a case study, the components, a lot of things that we've talked about already in this PowerPoint presentation. All that information is still there, but we bumped it down to the bottom uh, because uh, folks just wanted to be able to find the case studies more quickly. So I'll provide really quickly an overview on those. Uh, there are three different ways that you can navigate to individual case studies. The first is uh, case studies organized by topic into galleries. There's also an interactive map and then a searchable um, application to view all the case studies. So we'll look at um, those quickly. So I clicked on the first. This is initializing the application for the case studies group by topic or gallery. Um, these have been updated to uh, reflect galleries that we think are more useful for uh, land managers in the region. So actionable science, connectivity and corridors, fish and wildlife, different things like that. So each of the case studies will be assigned one major topic and that's the gallery that it will go into. So if you click on any of these and I will click on actionable science, it will take you to an application that has case studies where the primary topic is actionable science. There are other features to this application, but we'll look at those in a moment in a different way. I think that's all I wanted to say about this one. The second way that you can find case study content is to look at the interactive map, which I will launch here as well. So this interactive map has icons for each of the case studies that we have so far um, based on the topic or the gallery that it's in. So the different icons represent different galleries. which are also summarized up here. So it's the same 10 galleries that uh, we just visited and um, again, the group by icon. There is a ton of functionality built into this online map that I'm really not going to get into too much, um, but there are various features and icons on the map itself that we could spend a half hour going into. But what I do want to show you on this is the filtering options that are over here on the left where you can navigate to case studies that might be of interest to you. So we have a handful of different uh, major categories, I guess you'd call it, that the case studies fit into, which is the topic. Again, that reflects the gallery, also the icon that's over here on the map. We also have them, each case study has one primary stressor associated with it, um, different management strategies, um, ecosystems, and major river basins. I'm not going to walk through all of these, but I will um, let's pick on management strategies here. So the first thing, if you're going to use this, is you turn it on using the slider. 
and then you get a drop down of the management strategies that are um, that are available for you. So if I was looking for, um, and I guess I'll just go through what these are: actionable science, community engagement and education, fire management, habitat connections, land conservation, natural resource valuation, restoration, and then water conservation and reuse. We know that there could be some overlap between these different topics, but it is what it is. Each of the case studies is assigned to one primary management strategy. So if I was going to look at fire management, those will be populated. And right now, we have two case studies um, that are associated with fire management. I click on a different one, actionable science. We have more case studies on those kind of spread out throughout the Southwest. And then if I wanted to, I could look at actionable science related to my specific ecosystem of interest. So um, these are pretty broad, but I can pick on ecosystem, and these are level one ecoregions for North America. I can look at North American deserts, or I can look at southern semi-arid highlands. So these are an AND function. So if you turn both of these on, right now I'm only seeing case studies that are actionable science in southern semi-arid highlands. I turn these off, it should turn everything back on. Um, in this map, if you want to just search by region, you can zoom in and then click on an individual case study and then open the case study application. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to navigate using the third using the third option. So, and uh, just as a reminder here, because I'm sure that we've had some people join as I've been rambling away here for the last 15 minutes, if you have questions on any of this, please add your questions to the comment box, or the group chat box, I should say, on the video screen. And if you can't see the, the group chat, um, we can help you with that. Um, or actually, you can't. If you can't see the group chat, we can't help you with that. So if you can't see the group chat, you need to hover over the video screen, and a toolbar will pop up on the bottom. And you can click the group chat icon, which should be the second icon from the left. OK, I think that's all I wanted to go through with the map application. So then we'll go to this view all case studies application, which is the third one. So there are two main components to this. Um, to this application where all the case studies are in the same place. The first is just the, so that you can see all of them. If you wanted to just be able to see the full list of case studies, you can scroll through and see what's here and find something of interest to you. And again, all the case studies that we have completed are here. The feature that I really am, am excited about for this is the word cloud on the left created from the tags that are applied to the individual case studies. So every case study can have multiple tags, um, or every case study will have multiple tags. And you can use this word cloud on the left as a search function. Um, so for example, if I wanted to find case studies that are in the state of Arizona, click on that. And if I wanted to find case studies within Arizona related to grasslands, I would click on that. And I would see a list of case studies that meet that criteria, which is about uh, 10 or so case studies. Um, again, this is an AND function, just like the filters are in the map application. So if I wanted to look at grazing on grasslands in Arizona, I just add that. And we have four case studies that have that component built in. There are some other options here directly. You can also search using the search box up on the top. You have sorting options based on uh, date, name, or how many views it's had. Um, I think that's those are the main ones I wanted to go through. So with that, um, I wanted to go to a couple individual case study applications to show you some of the new functionality that is in there. Um, and we'll just get started. So first one I want to look at is uh, connectivity in Texas. All right, so once I've done my search, um, there's just one case study that is for connectivity in Texas, and it's this pronghorn friendly fence modifications. So to um, get into the case study, you can either click this icon with the arrow on it or click on the title. 
Oops, and I already had it open, so I'll use that. Um, so this is uh, the case study for pronghorn-friendly fence modifications in West Texas grasslands. So the first thing we're going to do is just walk through some of the different uh, the different tabs and the options that are available here. So uh, the main sections that we looked at in the PowerPoint presentation are in different tabs across the top. Um, this first, you know, by default, it takes you to the introduction tab. And on the right side, it has the interactive map embedded um, embedded into the, this application. So once you're here, if you decided you wanted to navigate to different case studies that were close by, you can close that icon that I had, and you can get into a different case study um, by clicking on the icon and then clicking on the link. But for now, we'll stay on this one. Um, I'm not going to go into too much on the, um, you know, the components of each. Uh, but as you go through, you can see the different sections, obviously, um, and uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and save this now. Um, this is the online version of the case study, so there's a lot of space to uh, provide information in here on all these different sections, key issues and goals, and et cetera. So uh, one thing you'll notice, we look at the handout, there's a lot of text in this section, and we have the space to do that um, on the online version. The other thing you probably noticed as I went from the introduction to the key issues and goals, a uh, photo popped up here on the right. And uh, those photos are also contributed by the folks that are giving us content. And we can embed individual photos and some other things um, off to the right as we go through. And this image happens to show a uh, pronghorn going under a, a fence that had been modified for, uh, for pronghorn passage. Project highlights, um, yeah, it's the same deal. I don't want to go into too much detail on this. Um, yeah, highlights from the project, really, again, always with a focus on what's relevant for uh, land managers. Um, and these are the things that people want to showcase from the project. Different photo over here on the right. And then the next tab is lessons learned. Um, we put a lot of weight on the lessons learned for each of the case studies uh, because these are here we can get into the things that worked as well as the things that haven't worked. Um, I don't think there's a good example or a clear example here for this case study, um, but again, lessons learned. Next steps, and then finally, uh, resources, this resources tab is kind of what I wanted to focus on for this case study. It has a list of the collaborators for the case study. It has an optional section if you want to include what the funding partners are. And I think this is useful to see kind of who's funding which work. Um, and then finally, the resources section, which provide, provides links to any online resources that we're aware of associated with this case study. Um, so we can embed links here directly uh, for things that are online elsewhere. Um, then also the photo gallery um, has the images that are included in this online version of the case study, uh, but it can also include, include uh, photos that are not on the case study that folks wanted to um, contribute. And these are all available on the Desert LCC Flickr page or a public download with uh, photo credits and captions on Flickr. And then finally, the primary contact for the project is here. Um, in the online version, we can list multiple contacts if people want to include them. All right. And uh, there are more resources that we'll um, show as we go into our next example. The next case study example that we're going to highlight is um, a case study on wildlife overpasses on Highway 93 between uh, Phoenix and Las Vegas, where um, there were wildlife crossings put in to help, especially bighorn sheep, get across this major highway without getting struck by vehicles, both for the wildlife and for um, safety of the transportation corridor. I'm not going to re-highlight all the same uh, components that we had in the previous one. 
Um, the one example I was going to show here, though, is when it opens, the different functionality that we have on the uh, for what's on the right. So another component that we're able to integrate here directly are videos um, that are available online. So this is a link to a, a video that's on YouTube. Um, and it's cool. It shows uh, Bighorn Sheep use, using this highway overpass, um, in this case, you know, uh, a ewe and a lamb crossing the overpass. So there's different capabilities here for that. We're also able to embed different things over here. Uh, we can include maps as images. So we get some PDF maps that we just convert to images and drop over here. In one case, uh, a contributor wanted to include a PowerPoint presentation over here on the right, which we included, uh, I believe, as a PDF where you can just scroll it. So if you have a more detailed presentation that you want to have directly online, we can include it here. Um, okay, let me move on. All right, um, some more videos here, which I'm not going to click on because it'll be too distracting from the other things we want to highlight on this page. Um, so the next piece here are the links that are on the top right version of the case study. Uh, different where, ways that you can share um, share a link to the case study in some cases. So you can share it obviously on Facebook or Twitter. Um, this third uh, icon, though, will allow you to get a shortened link for the case study that is obviously much shorter than the one you see on the top on my web browser. Um, it also allows you to embed this case study in a web page that you have um, using the, the HTML code that's here. It gives you different sizing options. Um, so this is also a resource for people to use on their own page. Um, so it's something we think is beneficial for them. Um, there's also a link to the case study handout, which I will show as an example in our third in our third case study. Okay, the third case study that we're going to highlight is one on strategic upland conservation easements uh, to support wildlife refuges in southeast Arizona. Um, this one is to support Leslie Canyon National Wildlife Refuge, which is essentially a very small riparian corridor that's dependent on water yields from grasslands and forests upstream. Um, so this is a really cool story that I found out about just in talking with Bill Radke, who's the, the refuge complex manager down there. Um, a story that hasn't really been shared um, widely outside of you know his circle within the uh, communications within the refuges. So uh, same components here, of course. Um, and I guess you know, to summarize briefly what this project is about is uh, Bill Radke and the Refuge worked with um, private landowners upstream of the, the Refuge to establish conservation easements that will help provide resilience to water yields that support Leslie Canyon and National Wildlife Refuge. There were also some cool and unique opportunities for um, the ranchers to help provide habitat for endangered species during low water flows and things like that. Um, lots of rich information here in this case study. Again, different photos, including endangered fish, of course, that were one of the primary goals for this, lessons learned, et cetera. Um, this is an example where uh, Bill did provide a challenge for us, um, you know, something to consider about you know, changing ownership and property and different personal conflicts that can affect the, you know, the resilience of conservation easements and working together with partners. So it's an example of shared challenges. Um, what I really wanted to highlight for this project, though, is that there's not a lot of information out there aside from this. And again, I think that's one of the really cool things about this effort is that we're trying to help people share their stories, um, which to me, this is a really meaningful case study that other people could learn from. So uh, the final thing we're going to look at is the case study handout, which there's a link in the resources on the resources tab. But you can also always find it even on the introduction page by clicking on the case study handout link on the top right to the left of the Facebook icon. So when you click on that, it takes you to a two-page handout version of the case study. 
So the idea for this is that it is um, communication product that's in a standard template that's very brief. Um, so you can print it two-sided on a piece of paper and take it to a meeting, uh, conference, work, workshop, et cetera. Um, and again, follows the, the sections, the template that's online, um, but trimmed so that everything fits onto two pages. So it has room for a few different pictures and abbreviated content for each of the sections, um, a simple map just with the project location, um, and so on. Obviously, there's a there's limited real estate to use for a two-page handout. So in addition to providing um, something that's hopefully still inclusive enough to be tangible, it has a link to the CCAST page, which you can click on to get back to uh, to get back to the main story map. Um, okay, and I think that's all I wanted to highlight for this one. Um, so, if, yeah, just to wrap it up, for every case study there is an online version that's more extensive with links to online resources and then this two-page handout. And I will leave these open just in case we want to get back to anything during Q&A. With that, we will jump back into the PowerPoint presentation. So again, um, hopefully those the reorganization and the new tools on the website will make it easier for people to find things. Um, and those are the big things to talk about. Um, so moving forward, we do have in mind a longer term product for uh, CCAST. And really what we're thinking about is narratives to accompany or narratives to explain groups of case studies around different themes. And um, an obvious product that we could develop is a story map based around thematic uh, narratives. And this is just an example. This is not a case study example, but it's a science communication article that the Desert LCC put out um, re regarding fires in riparian areas and wetlands. And this is our thinking for how we could develop an online story map where there's a narrative and then um, summarize case studies as you scroll through the story map. Where we are right now, uh, we have, I believe, 30 case studies that are online in CCAST already. We do have a ton of case studies, over 60, that are at different stages of development, including several that are very close to going online. So we're continuing to develop case studies, obviously, with regional working groups, partners in our landscape conservation design projects, and within our agencies and um, outside organizations as well. We are looking for additional CCAS partners, uh, being, of course, contributors, but also authors, um, folks that are interested in joining that team of authors and helping us develop shared leadership to really improve the potential resilience of this effort. Quickly, I um, want to provide a recap of some contributor feedback that we've gotten, um, just to give you an idea, well, various things. So most contributors, uh, these are the, uh, the folks contributing their projects to our team, end up spending two to five hours helping develop each case study, mostly providing materials, providing photos, and reviewing content. We've also asked people to estimate how much in-kind um, contribution they're providing, so they're contributed staff time. The average that we have so far is about $200 of estimated in-kind funding. So with the 35 completed case studies, that's around $7,000 in contributed um, in-kind funding. So that's awesome. We've also asked people what's good about CCAST. Um, and summarizing feedback here from a few different responses, but it uh, creates a way to share information in an abbreviated format. Uh, the diversity of case studies is really interesting with all the topics that we're providing and it easily provides information to a broad audience. Um, so it's another thing I didn't really mention, the, the way that the case studies are written is to be understood and read by a really broad group. So it's applicable for science, scientists, um, but we're not filling it with jargon that land managers are not going to understand or that could create some tension. Contributing, uh, contributing, continuing on the contributor feedback, we asked what could be improved. Um, again, the big thing was reorganization of the websites, which we feel like we've checked off at least for now. 
Uh, but generally, people want more, more case studies. Uh, we've been asked to expand the geography. You know, what areas are we willing to consider? Uh, people want more photos, more resources, just more. <laughs> um, and I guess the one thing associated with that is that we have extended the, extended the geography, so we're not limiting the case studies to just the Sonoran, Chihuahuan, and Mojave Desert ecoregions. Now we're looking at essentially west-wide for case study contributions. Some people have been looking for a more tangible way to go to go see the site, so opportunity for on-site visits, uh, which is something that is not really on our radar right now, but something that people can consider. Finally, we asked people how they would use the handout in online case studies, and it's to share with colleagues, share with funding partners. Uh, they can use it as a handout for field tour tours, again, using that two-page handout. And um, one of the really cool responses that to me is exciting is they want to send it to groups that would like to do similar work. And I think that gets to, you know, that's definitely, it's hitting the nail on the head for uh, what we're trying to do with this, so um, it's exciting. Um, this is just a screenshot of all the logos of all of the people that have contributed case studies to date. Um, not going to go through them one by one, obviously, but there's a huge diversity of partners that have contributed from agencies to universities, nonprofits, um, both the U.S. and Mexico, uh, state agencies in Arizona and Texas, et cetera. So the list goes on. Um, and people seem pretty excited about this. Uh, with that, I want to say a lot of the hard work that goes into this, again, with the contributors only spending a few hours on each case study, uh, these folks are really the ones that drive development of the content. Um, so Ashley Simpson, first of all, who I believe has developed far more case study content than anyone else. If you're on this um, webinar because you contributed a case study, you probably know Ashley by now. Um, Dina Morrell from Bureau of Reclamation, Amanda Webb from the University of Arizona, Andrea Lopez, University of New Mexico, Brianna Becerra, uh, University of New Mexico. Also, Ray Robinson from Cross Watershed Network, several folks from Rivers Edge West, which was formerly the Tamaris Coalition, uh, Philip Boyd from Borderlands Research Institute at Sol Ross State University, and then the website team of Adam Ricks and Jack Truax uh, out of the Bureau of Reclamation Technical um, Services Center. Uh, the, f the five authors that I highlighted are the folks that are still writing case study content for us. Ashley has moved on to um, a uh, master's program at the at Northern Arizona University. So if you um, get an email from these five folks, um, know that there are main authors for developing the case study content. So with that, this is an ongoing call for you to contribute your case studies. If you're on this call or you know folks that you think would be great contributors, please let us know. Uh, it's a way for you to share your stories. Again, um, hopefully we're providing a service to the people that are providing case studies by developing this, these synthesized um, uh, case studies. It allows you to show, showcase your work and organization through the online tools that we have, uh, creates an opportunity to interact, and really helping, hoping to develop a community of practice around different strategies and challenges. And just a couple of comments that we have gotten back from uh, different partners, um, people talking about using the case studies as a resource for collaborative planning. And then um, this one from Jeff Bennett, formerly now retired from Big Bend National Park, always looking for new ideas to guide us in restoration and management responsibilities. Narratives like this, these offer real life examples of the challenges we all face and provide solutions. So some cool things that people are saying about this. And with that, I want to say thank you. Um, again, I'm Matt from uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Genevieve Johnson from Bureau of Reclamation is co-leading this. Um, the link to the website where you can find all the CCAST information is here, desertlcc.org slash resource slash CCAST. And with that, I'm going to toggle back over to see if we have any questions. Um, if you have questions, again, please put those in the group chat box on video, and I will toggle back over right now and see if I have any questions.
right, so it looks like my presentation left absolutely no questions. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, we'll give another minute um, to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, well, seeing none, I will keep it open for another minute. Um, so the first question is, I assume west means to the Mississippi. Um, and essentially, yes. Um, I will say that we're not, we don't really want to limit this necessarily geographically, uh, but we are trying to keep a handle on the scope, mostly because we have limited staff uh, to help expand this. Uh, so. Well, first, to answer your question, Tim, yes, uh, west of the Mississippi. Um, there are two things, though. We're looking for, we're still interested in expanding if folks are willing to contribute some staff time to help develop it. Um, and we are especially interested in, I mean, even now, if there are case studies from outside the geography that apply to land managers in our region, of course, we want to share those as well. One of the purposes of this is not to be limited by any geographies to try to help share stories. Um, and the comment is that there are some great examples in Oklahoma. Um, and of course, we'll continue doing outreach for those. And hopefully, as more folks become aware of this effort, we'll um, get more people reaching out to us as well. Uh, so I will go back to see if. Let me see. All right, seeing no more questions, of course, feel free to reach out to us after this if you do have questions. And now I'll get back to what I was going to do. So I do want to thank you, everyone, for taking the time to participate in the webinar. As a reminder, the webinar was recorded, and we will make it available on our YouTube channel. You can access the channel on the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative website. You can also find it for searching for Desert LCC YouTube on, uh, well, on Google, or if you're on YouTube, of course, search for the Desert LCC channel. Again, thank you all for your time, and I hope you have a great day.